Hi everyone, welcome to Cornerstone City Church Online. My name is Bola and this is my lovely wife, Valentina. If you are joining us for the first time, thank you for making the time to be with us. You are really welcome. And for our brothers and sisters, members of Cornerstone City, hope you've had a great week and hope you're really looking forward to a great time of worship and the word and really celebrating God in this time. Let us pray as we go into that time of worship together. Father God, we thank you for today. We pray your blessing upon us, that today will be an inspiring and uplifting day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Over to you, Ogi and Eno. Have a great time. Good morning, Cornerstone City Church. Morning to everyone. Morning to the young. Morning to the not so young. Um, So we're going to start off with a song called Cast Your Burdens. And I want us to start doing some Afghan moves to this song. So we're going to start moving around. So um, just one, we're going to have some actions with this one. So if you're a child, so all the children, come forward. Come forward, that's it, that's it. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to show you what the actions are. And adults, you can join in as well, obviously. Okay, ready? Cast your burdens onto Jesus for he cares for you cast your burdens onto Jesus for he cares for you higher 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 lift Jesus higher So have you got that? Okay, so those are all the actions that we're going to be doing. Okay, and in between, I want you to do some African moves. Hit, hit, hit. Ready? Are you going to do some African moves? <laughs> okay, ready? Let's go. Cast your burdens onto Jesus, for he cares for you. Cast your burdens onto Jesus. For he cares for you. Cast your burdens onto Jesus. For he cares for you. Cast your burdens onto Jesus. For he cares for you. Into the darkness, creating the light. He 
to him never ending in days. He is Lord, and he comes in power and we call on his name. He is Lord, show your power, oh Lord, our God, show your power. Your gospel, oh Lord, is the hope for our nation. You are the Lord. It's the power of God for our salvation. You are the Lord. We ask not for riches, but learn to the cross. You are the Lord. And for our Give us the lost, you are the Lord. Show your power, oh Lord, our God. Show your power, oh Lord, our God. Send your power. Angela here, um, missing you very much, especially at church and seeing you all and being able to chat and have a hug and, and um, get to know you better. It's, um, it's most certainly a strange time being on my own here and feeling a bit disconnected and a bit in a bubble and not being able to see my grandchildren. Well, I have seen them from a distance, but I'm not able to give them a hug or to hold their little hands or even to hug my daughter um, who's done so much for me and is such a blessing. Um, but it's made me think about God and God's touch and though we might not have human touch that God can still touch our hearts and he does and he's touched my heart all the way through my life and particularly when I got to know him as father I, did, I didn't know what having a father was, so getting to know God as father was quite, quite difficult. But once I did get to know God as father, it really transformed my life. It made me see that I was loved and a beloved daughter and cared for and that I could do, I could do so much with his help. And he's blessed me all throughout my life and he's touched my life in so many ways. And I just think it's so amazing. And listening to the UK blessing, I don't know if you've heard the UK blessing, but it really is a way of allowing God to, to touch you and bless you. And it's been a blessing to so many people. And even Boris Johnson, I think, because he's given Tim Hughes the Light Award. So that's um, quite incredible. Anyway, bless you. Take care. Bye. Hi, Cornerstone City Church. My name is Charles, and it's my daughter. Francis. Um, we attend Cornerstone City Church, and we've been members of Cornerstone City Church in 2016. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better church to attend. We've been blessed as a family. Uh, my children love going to the church. I've loved going to the church as a family. We've been able to make um, some good relationship in church, and 
all I can say is thank God for directing me to the church. Uh, the reason why we're making this video today is just to encourage one or two persons and let you guys know what we've been through as a family during this lockdown. As a family, we've, um, we've I don't know if we'll say fortunate or unfortunate about COVID-19 and by the grace of God, I've pulled through. Uh, but it was two weeks of hell, it was two weeks of pain. The fever, the headaches, the hallucination, and all. Um, but all in all, we, 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 we pulled through prayers from my DNA group, prayers from a group of friends, um, my family, my wife, my children, everyone supported me. And at the end, I pulled through. Uh, it could only be God. So I'm only just going to say for anybody that is passing through any kind of sickness, any ailment at the moment, um, I want to reach forward to you. I want to let you know that the God that healed me will, is there to heal you as well. God is ever ready to heal us if we ask him to heal us. And there's another wonderful thing that's also happened to us as a family during this lockdown. I know many people have been saying, oh, it's been very boring. But to us as a family, um, we've had the opportunity to be able to fellowship with each other. I'm going to let Frances just expatiate on that a little bit here. We've been doing daily devotions before this lockdown period. We always said that we would start doing daily devotions as a family, but we never had the time and we would do it once and then never do it again. But now during this lockdown, we have much more time to do it. And we've all agreed that when this lockdown ends, we will find time to do it, even if it's a bit shorter, because it's really helpful. Yes, um, very, very helpful to us as a family. And because of that, um, even if we used to do it, but maybe once in a month or once in three weeks. But with this lockdown, it's been very consistent on a daily basis. Um, so now we know how wonderful, how, how blessed we are as a family to be able to have this, this opportunity to fellowship with each other and teach each other and grow together as a family. So it's something that we'll, we'll be doing regularly going forward. So thank you, love, very much for listening to us and have a good day. Bye. Bye.
I call this Don't Sissy Church, I'm Ben. And I'm Megan. And we're going to be quickly running through of you and reminding you what's coming up in the next week. The first announcement is about keeping connected. As a family, we think it's important to stay together throughout this coronavirus season. So um, we're a community, so we don't want to lose this close connection we have with each other. So the ways you can stay connected are you can keep up to date with our website www.cornstonecc.co.uk or you can also check out our YouTube channel and finally you can email the, um, the office.cornstonecity.co.uk um, Next notice is about grow groups. So um, we have grow groups in our church which keep us all connected especially during this time and we meet most like every week just a group of us to just pray talk about our weeks learn a few um, bit more about god's word and yeah we just encourage you to join one if you're not already in one um you can do this by going onto the web our church website cornerstone city church website and um sign up for one yeah that'd be really good because it will help you to grow in your relationship with god and to meet new people and make more friendships within the church Hi, Yvonne here. I lead one of the online grow groups in Gillingham. If you've not yet joined a group or been thinking about joining a group, we would love for you to come and join us. We meet on a Wednesday at 7.30 till 8.30 for a time of fun, food and fellowship. So we spend time just getting to know one another, growing together, and we also spend time feasting upon the Word of God. And we support one another in prayer. So, and we just have fun, loads of fun doing that. So if that is something that you'd be interested in, feel free to check out details on the Cornerstone web website. If you're in the Gillingham area, that is a bonus. But if you're not, you're still welcome to come and join us. So I look forward to seeing you guys. So come and check us out. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, Acacia here, just sending you some love at lockdown, hope you're doing really well and you're coping and I hope that you're able to see some of the positives, I know it's been a very challenging season but I hope you're doing really well. Um, we just wanted to encourage you to um, continue meeting together, I know it's not how we normally would um, but the way we're doing it in this season is with our grow groups which are happening online, if you're not in a grow group I would encourage you to get involved in one, if you see the link below um, you can sign up to a grow group, I just wanted to tell you about the one that we're running which is for feed, it's for, in, um, for, your, for those that are students who are in their 20s and if you're in your 30s and you fancy coming along um, it's our grow group it happens on Wednesday at seven o'clock if you're interested please sign up or contact myself and we can get you um, the details it's just an opportunity for us to to get together share life together see how we're all doing we do a Bible study and we also have a time of worship and we pray together um, it's so important at this time because it's so easy to feel isolated so if you're not in a grow group we just want to encourage you to get into one um, I think um, Adam's been saying that the new hashtag is hashtag stay together hashtag grow together hashtag pray together oh yeah so also we have the lockdown marriage se sessions so if you're interested in these you can go to the Facebook and WhatsApp groups for more information and login details to check these out um, next notice is about Monday morning devotions where you can meet at 6.30 to 7.15pm online where there'll be a short Bible study looking through the book of John and then time to pray with each other and uh, about the church and city. Um, yeah, so you can find details about that on Facebook or in the WhatsApp groups or email us if you get stuck. Well, not us, but Adam Vike. Hit him up. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> next. So also, for those of you that don't know, we've recently launched our Cornerstone podcast series. Already there's been interviews with people um, from the leadership team. So there'll be new interviews being posted most weeks. So please go and check that out as you can learn more about the people and leadership team within Cornerstone City Church to get to know the people more as well. And finally, we just want to say a big thank you for continually faithfully giving to the church. It's been coming as a big help during this time especially. And yeah, if you would like to join us financially in giving, then please visit the website 
um, there'll be options there where you can give money monthly or however often and or also you can look at the details of bank transfer or click on the link in the notes section or above to be taken straight to an online option. Thank you very much Thank you. and enjoy the service. G'day, g'day. Cornerstone Church, long time no see. I hope you guys are doing well uh, and obeying the rules. Rhonda, <coughs> no hugging anyone for a while. Um, Adam has just asked me to film a couple minute video um, just sharing a bit of an update on what's going on with me, my plans for the future, and also hopefully a word of encouragement for some of you guys out there. Um, as you can tell, I'm not locked down in the worst place on earth. Uh, I'm up here in Scotland, um, staying on a farm up here with some of the guys from Hope Church, uh, Mike and Suzanne McLeister. Um, and so I've been really blessed and provided for in this time and the Lord has taught me a lot about serving. Um, I'm just trying to get stuck in. They're teaching me how to drive tractors and stick big posts in building fences like this and doing a bunch of things, but also learning a lot from them. Uh, and the Lord's been shaping a lot of my character too. Um, I've been going through late Genesis at the moment, and particularly in 39, it's really struck me where Joseph has been thrown into prison. And the reason why that's really struck me is because you know the future was looking up for Joseph, and you know he had that coat going, and um, all the dreams and everything was looking up, but all of a sudden it just came to a street screeching halt. Um, and his plans all of a sudden got messed up big time. He was thrown into prison, um, but yet God was still with him. He's still with me, he's still with you guys, um, even though everything has just come to a halt. Um, and so what did Joseph do? He, you know, he served, he was always a server. He served Potiphar in his house, um, and he served in the prison as well, um, being head over the prison, uh, to the point where God was able to basically save Egypt and also the children of Israel through him and great things came about through it um, But that came about through just Joseph serving and just leaning into the Lord And he brought the breakthrough. So I just wanted to encourage you guys with that You know, I've been feeling that personally, you know, all of a sudden the plans have just come to a screeching halt And I'm stuck in a sense um, But it's about serving wherever you are whether it's on a farm digging flipping holes all day um, or it's, you know, whatever you're doing, um, it's about serving and God looks at the heart. And so I just wanted to encourage you that he brought Joseph out and it says in Genesis 50 that, you know, this was meant for evil, but the Lord meant it for good um, to save many people and, and bring about this day. So hopefully you guys feel blessed from that and, um, yeah, just serve him, lean into him and he will bring about this day to save many people um, into the kingdom. Love you very much, mwah, mwah, and I hope to see you as soon as possible. Seriously, I cannot wait to come and see you guys um, and just give you all big hugs, but not now, Rhonda, okay? Be good. <laughs> God bless you guys, and I'll see you hopefully soon. Bye! We miss you loads, don't we? Miss you all, and God helps me with my nightmares. I really do have very bad nightmares. I go to my mummy's bed, but God helps me. He helps me to heal myself, to heal everything. He even helped me to heal my leg. So, if you want to see God, you just have to think about him. Because I pray to him every night. Not every night, just some nights. Big God, he holds us in his heart. Our God is a great big God. He holds us in his heart, yeah. Everyone, come stand up. He holds us in our hearts. He holds us everywhere. Hi, Hi. church. We've been doing okay. We've been obviously in lockdown as everyone is, um, but we're quite lucky that we've moved to Cliff just before the end of the year. So we've been able to go out for walks and stuff in the local area, which has been quite nice, uh, especially with obviously the nice weather that we've we've had. Um, we've been just yeah, just keeping busy around the house, doing a few jobs but obviously the big thing with us is baby on the way so uh, she's due in four weeks now it's flown by um, but we're sort of in limbo 
as in we don't know with the rules that are in place with hospitals whether how long I'm going to be there um, and things like that which is a bit horrible not knowing and sort of you know not having a set regime of how things are going to go which obviously you never stick to with babies but you know it's nice to have some sort of clue um, but yeah we've been doing okay baby's all fine um, so yeah we've been sort of getting the bedroom ready for the baby and all of the sort of stuff that we need the cot and cribs and things so um, yeah that's been quite fun really sort of kept us busy and um, we haven't had any maritals yet yeah I've just been nesting um, but yeah, we've been doing okay. Um, obviously, Abby's missed out on a baby shower, but big thanks to everyone that helped organise that. That was today, but for you watching this, it wasn't today. Um, but yeah, so that was really nice. Enjoyed that, didn't you? Yes, thank you very much to Susie, Becky, and Sadie. Uh, yeah, um, it's been quite cool that we've got Zoom and stuff. Um, to connect with not just you guys as our church family but our family family like um, so that's been called cool, sort of quizzes and church, family church sessions and things so yeah it's nice that we've got that I don't know how we've got through this before internet and stuff um, but yeah generally we're doing okay um, just as I say in limbo a little bit with baby and um, yeah Love you all, stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you all soon. Bye! Bye. If you've ever wondered if there's more, you're not alone in that. We all explore, every day, in small ways and big. We find ourselves, reinvent ourselves, define ourselves, publish our lives. We find ways to stand out, and ways to blend in. We meet people that remind us of us, and people that remind us of who we want to be, and people that just make the journey that much more fun. We connect and share. We learn from each other and grow together. We celebrate and mourn side by side. We push our limits, challenge ourselves, fall down and get back up again. Our days are long and our nights get short. We put in the hours in the hope of building something that lasts. And at the end of the day, find joy in the fleeting things. We want to squeeze all the life out of life and hit pause on moments we wish could last. Put simply, we want to live. And along the way, discover all we can, experience more, and find out who we really are. For all our searching, it's rare to find time to think and talk about the big questions of life. About faith and reason and God and meaning. But exploring is good. We're built for it. Good morning everyone, my name's Adam and I'm going to be talking to you this morning for the next 15 minutes or so, but before I do that I want to give you a personal invitation to join us on our Alpha course. You've just seen a video invitation, we are running an Alpha course tomorrow night, that's Monday evening from 7.45 through till 9pm and you can come along, we would love to help you in your journey of exploration, just as many, many thousands of people have been helped, literally thousands around the globe have had their lives transformed as they've attended an Alpha course. So you can log in on this link right here. It's also in the notes on the YouTube page, or if you're on the Church Online platform, it's also in the notes there, or you can click on the sign up for Alpha box that is popping up now, and we would love to see you there. So do come along. Don't let this moment pass by to explore the deeper questions of life. As we go into God's word, let me pray just, just for, a, for a short moment. Father, we ask you to help us now. We ask you to come and to fill us with the Holy Spirit. And I pray for each one here, whether watching at home now, whether watching on a rerun or on, on YouTube, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come and open up the Word of God, the Bible to us, and give us understanding 
and lead us into the deeper things of God and life, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we've been talking about freedom, the subject of freedom over the past few weeks. And freedom is it's a tricky one to think about when you're in lockdown, but it's also a tricky one to think about when you look around you at the world around and you see so much of what doesn't look like freedom. We see suffering, we see grief, we see loss, we see pain. And that's not just in this season. We know that that is life on planet Earth. Things don't go as we want them to go all of the time. We have to face up to reality. And so there's no point pretending everything is okay, everything's happy, I'm okay, everything's good in my life when deep down it isn't. And there's fireworks and explosions taking place around us or in our own soul and in our own mind. So true freedom, that's what we're talking about today, is about going through it going through the grief and the loss and the pain and the discomfort, but going to and with the one who is an anchor for our soul. True freedom is to do two things at once. True freedom is about taking hold of the hope and the life and the joy that is ours in God Whereas at the same time, we're taking hold of the reality of grief and loss and pain that we experience in this life. If we take any other path, either to avoid it or ignore it or pretend it's not there, then those paths usually lead to further discomfort, depression and confusion. And I want to talk you through a bit of a quick, very quick summary through the Bible of how these two things are in place all the way through the scriptures. The joy and the hope alongside the pain and the grief. Both must be there together. Both must be faced up to and held on to in order to walk through into true freedom. It's a strange combination, it really is. So let's just skim through the Bible. I want to start first by talking about God, looking at God and how these two things are both in place in the heart and the mind and the approach of God. So God the Father grieves, faces up to pain and to loss, but yet is filled with joy and life at the same time. Let me just read you these verses from Lamentations 3, 32 to 33. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love, for he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. So just note those last few words there. He does not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. So in the story there, if you read back in Lamentations, so as God is bringing judgment and justice to his nation Israel, he's not bringing the trials to Israel because he's hard, but he's doing it because he has to take corrective measures for their own good and for the justice and righteousness of God to be maintained. But yet the heart of God toward them, it's like there's, there's a pain in what he's doing because it talks there about his compassion. It talks there in a way which shows the softness of God. Or what about this one in Jeremiah 48 verse 31? It says this, this is, again, this is God saying about uh, the nation Moab. Therefore, I will wail. I will wail over Moab. For all Moab, I cry out. I moan for the people of Ker Hareseth. And so there you've got this image of God who is wailing. God, you, you, you know, if you've you if you have wailed and there have been times in my life particularly when I was younger I would I would proper wail you know when you're younger you wail a lot but also as an adult when you experience deep pain or grief or loss and grief is really about loss and so don't just think of it as loved ones passing away although that absolutely is at the top of the list but actually any time we experience loss when we when we lose a hope 
or a dream, when we lose a job, when we lose money that we thought was coming from, there's a sense of grief that, t- that kicks in in our heart. And sometimes it leads us to wail. It leads us to cry out. And that's what it says that God has done. So my point is we mustn't forget that this is what God is like. God has experienced the pain of these emotions. But yet at the same time, We can read verses like this in the Old Testament. Zephaniah 3 verse 17 says, The Lord your God is in your midst, a a, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love and he will exult over you with loud singing. And so this same God, this same Father God is the God who has gladness in his heart, the God who quiets us with his love and the God who exalts with loud singing. And so he's not just a God of of justice and judgment and righteousness and wailing over sin in the nations. He is also a God who sings. He is a God who lifts his voice in exaltation. He's a God that is filled with gladness. That is the God we serve. Let's look at Jesus. That's God the Father. Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Saviour, he's the one that we look to, he's the one that we worship, he's the one that we follow. And Jesus was described this way in Isaiah 53 verse 3. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. So Jesus, the Son of God, the Divine One, knew sorrow and knew all about grief. Matthew 23, 37 says that when he looked out at Jerusalem, he was filled with compassion for them and he wanted to gather them together like a mother hen gathers their chicks. And so that that desire, that compassion, that softness of spirit. Again, when his friend Lazarus died, John eleven thirty five, 35, shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Now, if you are divine, If you are the son of God, if you're performing miracles, if you've raised the dead, which Jesus did, you don't need to experience that grief. You don't need to cry. You don't need to weep because you know where it's going to end. You know that Lazarus was going to be raised from the dead, which he was. Why weep? Because Jesus was experiencing and expressing the the fullness of the pain and the confusion and the loss that we experience here on earth. As he lived here, as he walked as a human, he experienced that, that emotion, he experienced the reality of life here on earth. But yet, Hebrews 1 verse 9, which is quoting from the Psalms, says this, says that Jesus was anointed with the oil of joy. Or another word would be the oil of gladness, which is the same word used for God the Father that we referred to earlier. And it says he's he's anointed with the oil of joy above all of his companions or all of his brothers. So he was a man who was filled with joy, was filled with the Holy Spirit. But yet at the same time, weirdly, he was a man acquainted with grief and a man of sorrow. So which was he? Like if we were with him, walking with him, was, it, was he like a, a depressive guy to be with? He had power, but he's a bit sombre. You know, the grief, the sin of the world, the pain of everything I see around us, I'm weeping. Or was he anointed with joy and gladness above all his brothers? He was like, yeah, I'm God. Yeah, I'm filled with power. Yeah, everything's going to be all right, guys. No worries, no worries. And he's just, he's just laughing. He's just a happy chap. What was he? Well, he seemed to be both. He seemed to be both. And we know that Jesus was the most free person to ever walk on this planet. Jesus was true freedom. And Jesus was true freedom while he was here on earth. Not just while he was in heaven, before or after or now. While he was here on earth, he was walking in true freedom, but yet he experienced grief. And yet he was filled with joy at the same time. My point is... Both of these things are important. Both of these things are valid. Both of these things we need to hold on to and move through them. Let's look at Israel. So in the Old Testament, these were God's chosen people. This this was where God focused his attention and his affection in order to reveal 
what he was like to the whole world. It's like he started there and then it went global from there. And you find the same thing is true in the life of Israel. They're to be an example to us and we learn from what they did and through what, through what they went through. Lamentations 3, 17 to 20. Here's uh, just an expression of pain and grief. I have been deprived of peace. I've forgotten what prosperity is. And I say all my splendor is gone. Everything that I'd hoped from the Lord has gone. And I remember my affliction and my wandering, my bitterness and the gall of it all. I remember them and my soul is downcast within me. That, it's, it's an expression of, of misery and loss and pain. Psalm 13, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Psalm 43, for you are the God in whom I take refuge. But why have you rejected me? Where do I go? And why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? So these are honest expressions of the world in which we live. This is what it's like. Sometimes things are confusing, things are hard, we don't know why things happen, we don't know where God is, and it's good to express it. It's good to hold on to it. We don't go round it, don't you go round it, don't you squash it down, don't you run away from it into other things. Hold on to it, go through it, express it to God. It's okay to express to God what is going on in your heart. But the Psalms and lamenta Lamentations that we've just quoted from, they don't just stay there either. They're not just honest books. Lamentations 3, 21 to 24, same passage, same chapter that we read from a moment ago says this, yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. And so right alongside the expression of pain and grief and the facing up to reality is this hope in God. It's the hope in the softness, the compassion of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. There's a hope that God will come through. There's a hope that even though I don't understand it all and I don't see it all in the order I'd like or when I'd like, I've got hope in my heart. I've got a sense of joy. There's some sparkle that remains even in the darkest place. And then finally, let's look at the church. So into the New Testament, does this play out in the New Testament as well? We've all already looked at Jesus, of course. He was very much in the New Testament. But we do, we find these two things at play also there. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 8 to 10, we find that Paul, the Apostle Paul, was despairing even of life itself. Such was the pressure and hardship that they experienced. It says, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life itself. Indeed, we felt like we'd experienced and been given the sentence of death. Awful. They're feeling pretty low here. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. And he's delivered us from such a deadly peril. And he will deliver us again. On him we've set our hope. There's that word. We've set our hope that he'll continue to deliver us. So they're going through it both. There's pain, there's difficulty, there's pressure, there's a sense of death, but we're not giving up. We're holding on. We've still got a hope in our heart. We're still putting our hope in the one that can raise the dead and turn our mourning into joy. We have hope in God. We have hope in something that goes beyond the grave. We have hope in Jesus Christ who raises the dead. And so we experience grief and pain and loss alongside hope and joy. And certainly I've experienced that a few times in my life. Um, a friend of mine died. I experienced both at the same time. Sadness, loss. Why? No, not right. No, please, Lord, too early. But at the same time, 
hope. Hope in God. Hope that there's resurrection. Hope that God is going to come through and raise him up from the dead. And my mum as well, who passed away in the last couple of years, same thing. There's grief, there's loss, there's questions, there's sadness, but at the same time, there's a joy, there's a hope. She knew God. I know that God has the final answer. So both of those things are held on to and experienced together as we go through it, not around it or running away from it or denying it. So what do we do? I'm going to finish by giving you a few practical pointers very quickly. Number one, express your grief, pain, loss and anger. Express it to God. He can deal with it. He can cope with it. He knows what's going on and express it to others appropriately. Those that know you and care for you, don't hold on to it, but move through it, express it. Secondly, pray and ask. Pray and ask God to help. Pray and ask God to rescue. Pray and ask God to heal you. Pray and ask God to deliver you. It's okay to do that. Even Jesus said, Father, may this job be taken away from me. Is there another way? The Apostle Paul prayed three times for God to deliver him from what is described as a messenger of Satan. So pray. And in both those situations, God said, no, I'm with you. My grace is sufficient for you. So pray. That's the point. It's okay to ask. Thirdly, trust and obey. Jesus continued to trust and obey the Father even though the Father's will was for him to go through to the cross and to die for the sins of mankind, he said, Lord, not my will be done, but yours. He continued to trust and obey, even though the pressure and the pain was upon him. So just like the old hymn, let's not give up, trust and obey, because there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Number four, rejoice and give thanks. We're told in 1 Thessalonians 5 that it is the will of God, it says, rejoice always, pray continually and give thanks. This is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. If you want to know what God's will is for your life, start there. That's a great place to start. And fifthly, we hold on to hope. Now and onwards into eternity. Revelation 21 verse 4 says, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. So we know where this ends. The chapter is going to be turned and we will enter into a new era. But the way in which we get there is to hold on to that hope to rejoice, to give thanks and to call on God to rescue us and deliver us. But we don't sidestep or avoid. We go through with courage by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's just respond now with a moment of silence as I pray. I invite you to express to God, just in the quietness of your own heart, any sense of pain or loss or grief or anger, or questioning, bring it to God. Bring it to God now as I pray. Father, I thank you that we can bring to you every emotion, we can bring to you every question, and we do that right now. Every person we're thinking of, every situation of loss, we bring it to you. And Lord, we ask that you would rescue us, that you would deliver us, that you would give grace and help and power to us in our time of need. We choose to trust you. We choose to obey you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, we pray, and may we enter into your joy for your glory, Jesus. Amen. And I want to finish by asking anyone who knows they need to give themselves to God today. It may be that you have drifted from God. It may be that you don't know God, that you're questioning and you've come to a point where you know you need God's intervention in your life. And so call out to him now, admit your need for him, express your need to him, put your trust into him, make a decision to obey him 
and then communicate with others. It's, it's so important to connect up with other believers and you can do that. There's links in the note boxes and if you're watching on the Church Online platform, you can click the little response button. Let us know who you are. Let us know that you've responded so that we can support you and encourage you in the next steps of your journey of faith. Amen. Let him